Hi YouTube, it seems like a really long time since I've sculpted any creatures from movies and I really want to get back into it. So I thought I'd start with Babu Freak, who's, he was in The Rise of Skywalker and then later he was in The Mandalorian as well. He's a really cute little character, he's a, a droid smith, really tiny little guy. So I just started with some aluminium foil, crumpled it up to get the rough overall shape of his body made a couple of hollows and then put a couple of marbles in and stuck them in just using super glue. This gives me my real rough overall basic shape. Next I was really keen to start getting the shape of his face in. So I'm using Milliput. It's a two part putty. You mix the two parts together in equal amounts and then it starts to set rock hard at room temperature. It takes about four hours. So you can see here look I've just done the eyebrow ridges and then I've just done his upper and lower eyelids and they're really quite sort of bulgy. I can sculpt wrinkles and things into the eyelids but I just wanted to get this rough overall shape on first. Next I did his lips and his cheeks. Now his lips have got this very kind of distinct groove in the middle of them on the upper and lower lip so I made sure I got that in and then again lots of kind of wrinkles going off in different directions. I just used like, quite a thin sculpting tool and you can use a, a tiny ball stylus type um, tool as well just for getting kind of little hollow pits and things in there um, for a bit of texture. Next I just wanted to get the main shape of his tummy area so I've just gone over all the foil I've gone around the back as well just to cover his back but you can see I'm just using quite a thin layer of milliput over the top. The foil is what's mainly making the bulk there. That saves you quite a lot of money on milliput. I think I end up using about five packs of milliput on this sculpt. Okay so next you can see I've sculpted his kind of hood area. So this kind of collar thing goes round and then it goes up towards his ears and then I've got a couple of kind of flaps that I've put on to start with and then I've got to make his uh, goggles separately that goes over the top of that but you can see I've added quite a lot of um, other details as well like his kind of big belt that goes across and then he's got this kind of wrinkled loincloth type thing that was made just by flattening out some milliput and then kind of squashing it together kind of concertinaing it you will have noticed that I only made the top half of his arms um, but at this stage I wanted to start working on his legs so what I've done is I've just drilled a couple of holes into this wooden base and I've taken some wire this is actually two millimeter thick um, steel wire this time not aluminium wire aluminium wire is much easier to bend but this steel wire yes it's tougher stuff and I just thought I'm going to need it to be quite tough because he's already quite heavy with the milliput. Um, and yeah, I want it to be really strong. So I've also made a little pouch you can just see on his belt there. Um, at this stage, I'd made another pouch. I've added a bit of milliput down the bottom to kind of attach the wires firmly onto the base. Um, and you can see he's coming together quite nicely. But at this point, I'm really kind of looking forward to making his goggles. I've done a bit more detail to his belt, um, you know, an extra strip with like lots of little lines, uh, vertical lines on it. And yeah, another pouch added. And it's looking pretty good. I've done the top parts of his legs as well, but I haven't kind of finalized how they're going to be yet. So at the moment, because the wire is still there, I can change the position of the legs a certain amount. So my plan for the arms at this stage was just to take a couple more of these um, bits of steel wire and then you can always drill a hole into the foil and you can slide this up into the hole. And what I'm going to do is make the hands separately on these wires, then push them up into the arms and then I'll make the lower arms to join the upper arms to the hands. Right, the way I decided to make his goggles was to lay out a whole load of um, bits of flat milliput on some uh, aluminium foil and then cut out some individual shapes. These I can then, after they've dried, I can sand them down, sand the edges and then I can stick them all together with super glue and make the overall shape for the goggles. 
Okay, I was really pleased with how the goggles turned out when they all kind of joined together. I'd made a few extra shapes as well for the side parts of the goggles and a few kind of discs and things that are stuck on. There's a disc on the front. A few bits I've kind of pushed in to form grooves and that kind of thing. And then I super glued them all together and I've also gone in with a bit of milliput along a lot of the edges and things and just kind of moulded that in as well and that gives an overall kind of strength to them it means they're not likely to kind of fall apart easily which they might have done if they were just held together with just super glue you can see in the background as well i made a little tool for him to carry but um, that will be added later when i make his hands right this is a really easy way of making hands you basically just make them as if they're kind of cartoon hands so just with really fat kind of thumb and three fingers and then what I'll do is I'll let the milliput almost dry. You can see I've added the wires into the hands as well. I'll let the milliput almost dry and then I'll kind of squeeze each finger and I'll be able to mould them into a much kind of finer shape. But for now, that's fine. Um, this is a sort of close-up of that tool that I showed you that I'd made earlier. I've also made this other one. Um, and what I did was I just rolled like a long kind of sausage of milliput and when that was nearly dry I bent it to form this kind of corner angle to it and then all I've done is after it's almost dried I've just gone in and I'm just rubbing it on a piece of sandpaper at different angles and it's flattening off a lot of the edges for me and I mean you could spend a long time doing this and make it really kind of perfect but I just wanted an overall kind of flattish look to a lot of this so it almost looks like a big allen key at this point but I think it's like a welding tool so I can add I've made a little hole in it and I'll add a bit of wire later so these are the hands with a bit of extra work done to them you can see I've added an effect of kind of fingernails and thumbnails and I've just bent the thumb and the fingers around the tools so it looks like they're grasping them and you can see I've propped them up on you know various modeling tools and things just while they dry um, and hopefully they'll dry in place like this and then I can add them on so this is them um, added on to the figure and what's really nice about this is obviously you can drill the hole up into the foil you can push the wire up in and then you can decide how long you want the arms to be and when you're happy with it then you can go in and you can shape the milliput to form the lower parts of the arms and it will join the upper arm to the hand and then your arms will be finished and that stage will be done on the legs I'm doing slightly different technique because I want to build up all the muscles so what I tend to do is decide where I want a muscle and then I'm just creating you know balls or kind of sausages if you like of milliput and I'm just adding them roughly where I think each muscle should be and that starts to give a really nice overall effect of the leg I don't want the legs to be too perfect by any means I just want them to give the overall impression of him and make sure that he looks like he's standing right right so this is what it looks like with the lower arms added again these don't need to be too perfect they just need to literally join the upper arm to the hand um, because I'm going to be adding these sort of like welding gloves that he wears over the top anyway so that's going to hide a lot of this there's no point sculpting them to perfection if you're going to be adding a glove over the top um, you can see also I've added a wire here into the, his sort of welding tool and at the bottom I've added three toes at the front of each foot and one toe at the back of each foot what's really nice about this is obviously any milliput that you can add that's going to kind of connect the leg to the base is going to strengthen it and it's going to mean that he's going to be way way more stable okay you can see this tool is still quite loose so I'll end up sticking that on with some super glue but for now I think that's a good position that I've put it in as a nice little extra touch on his goggles I've added this rectangular section um, my kid said it makes him look a bit like a money box which is fair enough but that is actually what it looks like on the screenshots that I've seen from the movie so 
I'm quite pleased with that. It will look even better when it's all painted up, obviously. But for now, that's uh, a nice extra little touch. Okay, I added an extra little sort of Allen key thing that I'd made earlier. Just stuck that on the base. It'll be a nice little extra touch again when I come to paint all of this. And then what I've done is I've been working on his tendons on his feet. That looks quite cool, makes his feet look much more realistic. Um, and then on his gloves, I've put those on. I've just made those out of really thin kind of sheets of milliput added on and then I've added like straps and things as well and that gives a good kind of overall effect but it will look much better when they're painted. I think with these sculpts the more details you can get on the better especially because when you come to paint the paint really brings out a lot of the details so yeah it's well worth spending a bit of time on especially at these kind of late stages where you've done almost everything but you're kind of looking backwards and forwards at it and you're thinking, what else can I add in? Um, the more the merrier, I think. Right, I always get really excited when I get to the painting stage because it's the bit for me that can really kind of bring it to life. So I've started off with this mix, which is green and black mixed together. So it gives like a really quite dark green, but I've watered it down a little bit. So you can see it's quite patchy. But I don't mind that. I think that's going to add overall kind of texture to him. And I've washed that basically over anything that is his skin. So like his fingers, you know, his legs and his feet, his tummy, his arms and his face. And it really separates all of his skin from all of his clothing. Okay, next I dry brushed on a lot of this light kind of pink colour. So this was a mix of white, a little bit of cadmium red and a tiny bit of yellow ochre. And what I've done is, yeah, dry brushed it on. So if you haven't done dry brushing before, you basically take your paint on your brush and then you scrub it on a bit of um, kitchen paper. So there's hardly any paint left on your brush. And then you're just um, dusting it basically over all of the high areas. So you can see it brings out like the fingernails, brings out the higher um, bits of the muscles on his legs, you know, his sort of tendons on his feet and his toenails. Um, and all the facial details they all show up really well next i wanted to paint all of the sort of leather areas brown so i just did a mix of cadmium red and sap green i'm using um, system 3 acrylic paints to do all of the painting work on this and you can see i've just got that over most of the areas you can then use a little bit of um, yellow ochre and just dry brush that here and there and that gives a nice kind of leathery effect. I'll add more details to this later, but it's starting to kind of um, block in all the colours nicely. Right, I decided that I wanted the top of his goggles to look more like they were made out of metal. So I've just dry brushed a lot of silver around the kind of edges and corners and that kind of thing. And that's made a real difference. They do look like they're made of metal. It's quite hard to see in this video. It doesn't show up as much as I would like it to. Um, but it really does look metallic in real life. Okay, on the sort of hood area, I've used a lot more yellow ochre, especially on the kind of rims of that. And that kind of separates the rims from the rest of it, makes it kind of stand out. I've also added the same yellow ochre colour to paint his gloves, but I've done brown straps on the gloves as well. The little Allen key at the bottom, I've painted just flat silver. Um, the big tool that he's holding in this hand I've painted silver but I've added some black detailing to and his welding tool I've painted black but then I've kind of dusted um, silver edges onto it which makes it look more like real metal. So at this stage I'm really pleased with how he's looking but I want to add like a colour wash where I really water down some paint and I just give him an overall slightly browner look to his skin because he's just a little bit too green for my liking. Right, this is his finished look, and I've added a few more details here. So I took a whole load of this fur, which was from an old sort of furry dog toy that I had, cut that off, and then I've just taken some super glue, and I've just stuck on his whiskers. So he's got, you know, bits where he's got a sort of a moustache kind of effect, and then he's got a few whiskers on his chin, and I've done his eyebrows as well all with the same fur. 
you just trim like individual little clumps of fur and stick them straight into the super glue and it gives a really good effect actually um you'll have noticed as well that his eyes that were marbles i've painted and they've got a really nice shine to them now as well and that shiny effect was done using some uv resin so you basically just paint the uv resin over the eye that you've painted um, and that makes it look wet but then obviously the uv resin is still it is still wet so you take a uv torch like i've got here and you just shine it uh, onto the eyes and then that makes the uv resin go hard so it's got a hard shiny clear layer over the eyes it gives it this really amazing wet look you can see i've added little hints of color um, over the whole thing as well just using color washes so really watered down paint and uh, yeah it's ended up just really kind of making all of the skin tones and things much more realistic much more accurate and I'm just yeah really chuffed with how he's turned out so I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's inspired some of you to go out and try and make a little babu freak of your own um, hit subscribe if you want to see anything that I post in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.